Hey, welcome to a tutorial on how to create a capture system like this one. This is kind of a security system for your website. Maybe you have somewhere to for users to type messages or for users to log in and you want to make sure that they are not robots, that it's not a crawler that's doing that, but an actual human. So you give them some numbers to type in the space here. So if I do type uh, the wrong number and check, it do tell me the capture is wrong. But if I do type the correct number, it's five, six, nine, four, it will say you are correct. Now, the important thing here to note is that this is actually an image here and it's created in real time using PHP. So these are not pre-saved images, but they're images that are created right now on the fly. Once I refresh the page like that, some new numbers keep being created over and over. So the image is changing, being created in real time through PHP. Okay, so let's see how we can go about doing something like this. So to begin, make sure that you have a few things and that is one, your browser. Make sure you have a browser. And then the second thing is make sure you have a server installed on your computer, either ZAMP, which like I'm using here, or WAMP or MAMP. So download ZAMP and install it on your system and then start Apache here by clicking the start button there once you open the control panel okay and once everything has started we are ready to go so if you installed zamp in your drive c if you didn't change any settings when installing it's probably installed in your drive c so go to that folder inside c zamp htdocs and then create a folder called capture I don't know, even know why it's called capture, but it reads as capacha. Anyway, in any case, I have a font in here. Uh, make sure the font that you have is .ttf as the fire extension. It should be a true type font. And you can choose any font. So this is Open Sans, which you can, uh, Open Sans regular, which you can download on Google Fonts or my personal favorite website is uh, dafont.com so you can go here and type something like grunge and get some of these grunge uh, these worn out fonts like this because capture needs to be hard to read by machines so these fonts would do quite well so you can do your experiment get any font here as long as it's a true type font so you can go to also you can use google fonts to download those fonts okay so once we are done with all that blubbering let's uh, begin so to begin i'm going to use a text editor here i'm using sublime text you can use notepad or any text editor of your choice and then i'm going to drag this entire capture folder into my yes something like so okay so in here, I'll right click and say new file. So I'll create a new file in the folder capture, save that file as index.php, of course. Okay, maybe we're going to save this as login.php just because uh, usually the capture thing should show on the login page. So there we go. So login.php. So I'm going to come to my browser now and add login.php at the end there okay so i get a blank page which is awesome so let's begin by creating and learning how to create an image before we put anything in this file so i have created a list here of the uh, functions we are going to be using so that it's easier to remember in case you forget something. So the first thing we're going to need to do is change the header of our, our page here. 
to make sure that it reads this file as an image. Okay, so let me copy this. Now, all these functions here only work if you have the GD library on. So let's see how we can switch that on. So let me put my PHP tags first here and then paste this code right there. So header, content type, image, PNG. But uh, let's change this to JPEG, I think. That will be more interesting. Like that. Okay, so we are done here. So if I come back here and refresh the page, you see that uh, it changes to black like this and say, cannot display the image because it contains errors. That's because there is no image. So that's okay. Now come back to your control panel in ZAMP and open your, click on config here and open your php.ini file. Now, if you don't have this ZAMP, you're using a different one, just go to your, the folder where the server is and then go to your find your php folder or in there just search for php.ini file like this one right here and then once you open it it would be a good idea to open it inside sublime text it will look much better but what i'm looking for is the gd library so i'm going to search for gd here and press next and as you can see here there are a bunch of extensions here so if there's a semicolon at the beginning, then it's not working, it's not active. So just make sure that at where GD is, there is no semicolon at the beginning. So if there was, remove it, close this file, save it, and then stop Apache and restart it. Okay, so once you've done that, you are now able to edit images on your PHP. So now what we want to do, since we want to display an image here, is to create an image. So how exactly do you create an image in PHP? Now there are several ways. So there's this function called image create true color. That's the one we use to create an image. Now, just a heads up, let me say, this is the will be the original image. Or well, let's just call it image. It's an image resource. So I'm going to say image is equal to, so I'll say image create. So now keep note that there are several image create functions here. So there's image, the ones I want you to pay attention to are image create from JPEG. So if you already have a base image that you want to use, you can just do that from JPEG, from PNG or from GIF. And then once you create that image, uh, in the brackets, you pass in your, like here, the file name of that image. So you put the file name in there, like that. So if you have it in the same folder, you can just say image.jpg, like that. And then it's going to create an image resource. But this is not what we want to do. We want to create an image from scratch. So I'm going to say image create true color. That's the one I want to use. And then I have to provide a width and a height. So I'm just going to use variables here for now. So for the capture, we want to use a very simple image. So I'm going to say width is equal to uh, maybe 200 pixels. You don't have to write the pixels themselves. So height is equal to 100. So it's, it's going to be shorter than it's wide. And then of course, I will need a font but before I do that, I just want to show you that we've created an image here. And then I will come here and let me come down here after changing the content type. And then I'm, I'm going to say image JPEG. So image JPEG is how we create images. So I'm going to put that image there, the image resource like so. And then always remember to destroy the image after you've used it. So we're going to use image destroy. I'll put image there to save memory. So what we've done here is created an image with a specific width and height, change the content type, and then we want to send the image to the browser. 
So doing this sends the image to the browser, but because the browser is expecting an image, it will display it as an image. So let's see if we have something there. So refresh. Okay, so as you can see now, we have a, an image showing here, though it's uh, black like this. So let's see if there's a function here we can use to actually change that. And I see image fill over here. So let's see um, the image fill there. Now, before we do that, there's another function here called image allocate color. Image color allocate. Now, every time you want to use a color in an image, you have to allocate it first. So let's do that. Let's create, I want a white background for my image. So I'm going to name this white like so and say is equal to uh, image color. Wait, there we go, image color allocate. So you have to supply the image resource, which is this one. So it means I can only allocate the color after I create the image because I need that resource. And then I'm going to supply my red, green, and blue. So white is 255 because those are the maximum numbers from zero to 255. So you can change these numbers to determine what color you want. If it's red, you, you, you put maximum red. This is RGB. So that's the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue. Okay. So if I put uh, 255 and then put zero and then zero, this will be red. So once I allocate this, I'm just going to leave it as white for now because I'm looking for white. I just want to show you that here it will be red. Or oh, let me undo that for a second. Let me do an image fill now. There we go. So image fill, I want to fill in the image itself, image resource, that's what it takes. Let me do that. And then the XY. So the XY determines exactly where I want to start the filling. So for me, it's 0, 0, because I want to start it from that very corner. And then I will put my color there, which is have, which I have called white, conveniently. So let's see what happens now. So if I refresh, you see now that my image is white, as expected. Now, if I put a zero here, I'm, the color has changed because it's maximum red, zero green, and maximum blue. So what color do we expect to see there? There we go. So that's how you change your colors there. So I'll undo that to give it a white. And then the other thing I want to add is uh, some text, right? So let's put our text there. I'm just going to say the text we're going to put here is, uh, this is a test as usual. So now to put test text, so this comes in order of appearance. If I start with the text and then I'll, I'll be laying, I'll be putting layers on top. So for example, I start with the text and then I fill it up, I put a box and so on. There's so much you can do on the image. You can even add a watermark. You can get another image and paste it. You can use this same system to crop and resize images and so on. So these are, you can think of them as layers. So here what I want to do is use one of these functions here, which is which one? Uh, which is this one here, image true type font text, that one right there. So I'm going to say image TTF, uh, text that one right there this one box i think determines the width of the image you're going to have in case you really want to know uh, how wide the image is going to be or the text is going to be so you can do your calculations there you use this one but let's use this one right here so i need to copy that in image variable so here to add your text first of all you need the image resource, which we have right here. And then you need the size of the font. So I, I want to put, uh, let's see, 25 pixels. The angle, I don't want you to rotate. So the angle will be zero. And then XY, I'm not sure. Maybe let's try uh, 30 by 30, just to make sure it's somewhere in the center. And then the color. Now the color here, I want a black color. So let me do this and do black. 
So I'll call it black conveniently, but here I'll just replace these guys with 000, zero, zero that creates black. Okay, so here I will say black. And then I need a font file and I need the text. So the text is conveniently already there. So I'll put a variable there like so. And then now I need a font file. So I'll just put change that to a variable as well and then create a link to the font file. So the font file is already on my system, but that's the name right there. But uh, let's uh, see if, uh, let me just copy it copy everything including the file extension and put it here like so so if your file was in a folder like a folder called fonts like that you would do that in order to get to it so but ours isn't in a folder so we'll leave it like that font file image text okay so we have everything set and if I run this now I should see some text so back here refresh and you see, this is a test. Mm. Very good. Now for our capture, our text is going to be a few numbers. So I wanted to create different numbers every time. So I'm going to use the random function. So I want a four, five digit number. So I'll start with uh, one zero zero five, five characters and five characters there. Okay, just so it's a, uh, it's a five digit number, something like this. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Now, if you don't want it too close to the top, you can just change the coordinates here. Let's say 60 by 60, something like that. And it's going to move like so. So a bit too much on the X axis. So let's go back to maybe 40. Let's see that. Okay. Anyway, you can try and find your center, right? You can even use the width and the height so that it's automatic. You do some calculations there. Maybe for example, uh, width divided by two, so it starts in the center, or divided by four. So we can do that and just do copy that, uh, the x-axis. I can just do width divided by four, something like that. Refresh, yeah, something like that. Okay. So uh, pretty good so far. Now the thing is, the reason uh, the capture numbers usually look warped and all that is for a simple reason. It's because machines uh, have become very clever now. So you can get this image, uh, just send it to a website, and then you can bring back the, the number that is saved here. The purpose of a capture is to make sure that a robot will not sign up or post something on your system. So if it's possible to send this to another API and then get back the text inside it, then it defeats the purpose. So we have to warp the image to make sure that it's unrecognizable to a machine except to a human. So how do we do that? Well, The thing is, the good part about uh, the GD system is that I have access to every single pixel on this, uh, on this image. So I can manipulate these pixels as I please. So as a result, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to try and manipulate each pixel. Now, instead of manipulating the image that exists, because the problem is, if I try to manipulate this particular image right now, I'll start by, because I have to loop through this image, I can't do it at once. I have to get one individual pixel at a time and then manipulate it and then go to the next pixel and so on. Now imagine if I'm manipulating this part, part one here with, with one, right? So if I manipulate uh, the top, let's say, let's imagine I'm going like this. I start from the top, go to the pixels here, come back here and go back like that until I reach the bottom of the image, right? Now, if I am at the very top of the line here and decide to manipulate the image by moving these pixels down here, then it becomes a problem because now I won't have access to the original material, which uh, I'll end up man making very weird manipulations because the pixels that were here will be here. And then by the time I come down here, I'm going to move them further here 
and then when I get here I'm going to move them a bit further and so on and then this whole thing will be completely unreadable. So the best thing to do is to have two images. So I have this image right here and then I can create another image on this side. And then what I'll do is I'll use this as the image to copy from then manipulate the pixels and paste them on the next image. That way I have a solid uh, original image to read from, manipulate, and then paste on the new one that is manipulated. So in order for that to happen, I need to create two images, right? So let's create one we're going to warp. So what I will do here is right here, after I do all this, I'm going to create a new image here. So copy this code and put it here, right? So now this one is going to be the warped image. So I'm just going to call it warped underscore image. So I'll use the same width and height so that uh, the pixels can translate one to one from one image to another. So it's a new image. Then I want to fill it up with color as well. So I'm going to use image fill right here and paste it there. Now, this, the thing is I can't use this white color, which is right here, because this color is allocated to another image, which is this one. So I have to create another allocation in order to do this. Now, if I don't want to go through the hassle of creating variables like this, I can do it inline because I can just copy this the way it is, copy that, and put it right here because I know it evaluates to a white. But then I'll change this to warped image because I have to allocate it to the warped image like so. So I'm just doing it in line. And also here, warped image. All right, then. So now we have two images. One image which has some text and then another image we just filled with white. But then I want to copy the pixels from here to this one, yes? Yes. So how exactly do I do that? So let's loop, shall we? Let's do a, a for loop here, right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use X and Y. So let's start by looping through the X axis. So the X axis is the width. So I'm going to put this one here. So for X is equal to zero, do this for as long as X is less than the width. Okay, that's okay. Then let's do another loop inside this one and use the Y axis here. Okay, and then use the height over there like so. So once you do this, it means whatever I do here will pass through every single pixel. Okay, through the X. So here we'll be going through the X and for every X pixel we get, we'll get a Y pixel. So it doesn't really matter. I can do this, start with the Y and then go to the X. Uh, not really a big deal. But just know that in here, we're going to go through every single pixel. Now, in order to go through every single pixel, I want what I want to do is, let me come back here, is to grab every pixel and know the color that's there and then paste it on the other one. But before pasting, I want to manipulate it a little bit. So to get the colors from the original image, I'm going to do color. Color will be equal to, now there's a function here, one of these functions that are, and this one is uh, image colors for index. Okay, this one, image colors for index. So let's use that one. So say image colors let's find it here shall we right there image colors for index so it needs an image resource the original image which where i'm getting this pixel from so i'm getting a pixel a single pixel from that part now i need to know the index where i'm getting that from now this index is a you see the thing is a pixel contains three components. It contains red, green, and blue. So it's just not one, one piece of information. It's three pieces of information. So this index should contain all three. So let's create that index here. So 
in order to create that index, let's do this. Let's say index be equal to, I'm going to use color add. So I'm going to say image color, image color add, like so. So that's on the image itself, I want to get the X and the Y. So all I have to do is put change these to variables because they're already defined here. Okay, so it's going to get that index, put it there to tell it where to grab the color, and then this will grab the colors themselves. So copy that, and let's come down here. Uh -huh. Now, once we do all this, nothing will happen here. Now, we have two images here, warped image and the original image. So what I want to do is image JPEG the warped image. I want to show the warped image, not the original, which has some text. And then I need to destroy both after this whole thing. So I'm going to destroy the warped and the original image. So if we go back to our browser, we're just going to see a white image now, but the other one still has the text. We just need to copy that text onto this one. So let me come back here and Now what I need to do is copy those pixels. So get these pixels, put them on the other uh, on the other image. So what I will do here is uh, I'm looking for this one, image set pixel, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to say image set pixel. So I want to set the pixel on the warped image. So warped image and then the x y there we go and then the color okay let me put that there put that color here like so now i need to collect uh I need to collect the information from this index, the X, Y, and the Z, okay? The, the red, green, and blue. That's what I need here. This is, uh, this is actually not a color per se. This is a color component. Let, let's do that. Let's write it like that. Maybe too long. Let me just do, say, color comp like that. Okay. Now, Setting a pixel requires a solid color. Color is something like this, where we do image allocate, and then that's a color, right? So let's do an image allocate as well here. Now let me copy this, come back here, and copy, and then I'm going to put it here. Now I don't know what color this is at that point, because I've simply gotten this color from the previous image, so I can't really guess. So I won't call it white or black, I'll just say color. But then the values for the X uh, or the red, green, blue are inside this color comp there. So copy that. And then I want to allocate this color to this warped image because that's where I want to paste. So warped image. And then let me replace all these with color comp and then choose inside there. Let me do that for a second. Then I have to tell it red, green, and blue. So red, green, and blue. Okay, something like this. So don't let this all confuse you. The only thing I'm doing here is, first of all, I'm looping through the original image, which has the text. So for every time I loop, I grab the color at a particular X, Y position from that original image. And then once I grab that, I separate it into components for the red, green, and blue, so I can have them individually. The reason why I'm doing that is because when allocating a color, I need the red, green, and blue separately, okay? I need to provide them, so I have to split them like this. And then once I split them, I can now put them in here when I'm allocating this color, and then I get this color, paste it on the other image. So if this whole thing worked, what I'm supposed to see is just the normal number on the other image as well here instead of a white thing and there we go so i've successfully copied one image to another 
exactly one to one. Now, why do this? The reason we, I'm doing this is because during the copy process, I can intercept the pixels and manipulate them before I send them to the other image. That's the advantage of this. So here I can do that right now. So that way, instead of just sending the X as it is, I can edit it, but I want to edit the Y only. So let me change the Y. Now, the problem is I don't want to change the Y variable itself because the Y variable is being used in the for each loop and that will cause problems. So let me just change this variable to something like image X. Let me put a capital X there and then say image Y like so. And then I can uh, allocate these guys to, let's say image X is equal to X and then do the same for Y. So the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to manipulate the originals as I have said here. So Y and then is equal to Y. But then Y we can do something. Let's use a cosine. So let's add to the Y and the, let's use sine like so to manipulate, to make sine is like uh, creating a sine wave. So we want to create a sine wave, uh, which will go either left or left or right or up and down. So the sine here, we're going to use the X variable there and then divide that by just a random number. So I'm going to use 10 then to make it look bigger, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 10, something like this. So what I'm doing is I'm intercepting the Y variable and editing it here. So to avoid editing these, I assign it to that, which I give there. So let's see if we have something good. So as you can see now, the words have been warped in a sine wave format. So this thing goes like this, sine wave like that. Okay, boom, 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 boom. So if I move this a bit here, it's going to warp using that sine wave. Now you can manipulate these numbers. If I put five, for example, it increases the frequency of the rotation like that. So the warping is, uh, wait a minute. Actually, this one determines the size of the warp and this one determines the frequency actually, because that's the sign there. So that's the frequency. Mm -hmm. So the reason it looks like this is because the wa waves are closer together like this. Okay. So you can go back and forth here to see what works best for you. Increase those numbers like that. This will increase the amplitude. So if I change that other number, it will push them up and down a little bit more like that. Okay. So this is for the amplitude, up and down. This one is for the frequency. How many waves do you want? So let me leave it at 10, 10 there. Refresh. Okay, I think uh, you can read this number. This is 83790, I think. If I refresh, you see different number every time. Now, somebody could actually write an algorithm to guess these numbers if they are static like this. So it would be a good idea to actually rotate them at random. So imagine uh, the image text here, there's a uh, provision for rotation. So if I add a number like 10 here for the angle and do that, you see uh, it's a bit rotated. Let me increase that so we can see it a bit more. Okay, so you see the rotation over there. You can even put negative values here because this is rotation after all, like so. Okay, so let's see the maximum we are allowed to go. Let's see 30 there. Maybe 20. Okay, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then instead of just making it uh, static like this, you can put a random number like so. And then for as long as this is less than the other number, we are good to go. So minus, and then I'll put 20 here. So minus and positive 20 like that and refresh. Okay, so every time I refresh, there's a different rotation going on there at random like that. 
that way you can't really train a computer to try and read this okay very good very good now keep in mind that the original image here before we put some text can actually be an image so you can actually make your own image and then paste it there in the background to do that just change this from image create true color to image create from jpeg then you can add the file path in there and the rest will remain the same okay okay so we can try that if you really want to see it let me go to the desktop and let me get an image here a random image let me get this one and uh, it's a jpeg so come back to kapacha paste it there i'm just going to reduce it to image.jpeg like so So the resolution for this one is 960 by 350, something like that. Mm -hmm. So what I can do with this is, let me mute this for a second. I'll get back to it. Then I'll say image create from, from JPEG. I'll go from JPEG there, like so. And the file name is image.jpg. Then let me remove all this. Now, I still need the values for width and height to suit the image that I've created, right? So that's very easy. We're just going to use the same image to get the width and height after we create it. I'm just going to say image SX like so, and then we'll set that to the image. So it's going to read from the image itself, the width and the height. And this one, I'll just change the Y like so. And we are good to go. So if I now refresh, you see what's happening now. The whole image is warped like this, and there is a number there. Okay. Now, if you don't like how big this uh, this whole image is, you just wanted it to remain with the capture. You can crop the image, and to crop the image is easy. You just create a new image, like image create true color here warp copy that let me bring it here so i want this image to let me change this one to image underscore real like that and then uh, let's remove these guys let's maintain this width and height right so i'll remove that so then the warped image not the warped image the original image now will be this one where we create true color with these dimensions. So this is just the image that I want to use as a background. And then what I would do now is I'm just, just going to say image copy resampled. I'll say image copy resampled here to copy the image to the other side. So first there, I'm going to supply. See, there are a lot of parameters you have to supply there. So I'm going to say destination image, right? Where am I sending this to? I'm sending this to image. And what is the source image? The source image is the image real. That's the real image. Let me move this down a bit. Destination X. So I want to start from zero. Destination Y, zero. The source, zero, zero. Destination width. So on the width of the destination, I want to use the full width of the destination right there. And I want to use the full height of the destination. What about the source width? How much of it do I want to get? Now, the source width, I just want to use the this width and the height. So if I use the original width and height, then it's going to resize the image. So it depends what you want. If you want to squeeze the image into uh, the, the thing, you will use the width and height of the image. But if you don't want to squeeze it, you just want to add what's there, then you use this width and height. So let me do that width and let me use height as well here, like so. And just by doing that, uh, image real also should be uh, deleted at the end here, destroyed once you are done, but no matter, let me just try this. And now you see what's happening there. 
I can put an image in the background like so. Okay. So that's how you can do it if you want to do it like that. Or if you don't want, you can leave just the white image there. Okay, so now that we have this uh, capture thing, we can create a simple uh, page here, sign up login page to actually deal with it. So what I will do here is I'm going to, so it's up to you. If you want to return it back to that, you can remove all this, all this copying here and just get this original image over there. So you can just delete all this and then just undo that one like this. If I do that and then go back, then we are back to our simple setup here. Refresh. Okay, like that. Pretty cool. Okay, now that we are done with that, let's remove the header content here and actually save a file. So image warped no longer exists. Oh, no, it does exist, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. Now image JPEG is going to save the image. So if I put a second parameter here, I'm going to save this image. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it garbachar.jpg, like that, jpg. And then I can put in the quality here. Uh, the default I think is 90%, but you can put it 200% since it's a small file. But usually 90 will do just fine. But you can leave that out if you don't want to, the quality like that, it will still work. So this time, if I refresh the page, I will see a blank page like this. But if I go to my folder, I'll see that there's a new image there, which contains the actual capture image, as you can see here. If I change the view to extra large, you will see that it's right there in my folder. Okay. Very nice. So now what I need to do is create a system for my login page. So this whole thing, I just want to create, uh, change this into a class so that I can move it to anywhere where I want. So I'm just going to say class create, or if you don't want to create a class, you can just create a function. So let's make things easy. Let's create a function instead. Okay, so I'm going to do that. The function name will be create garbacha, like that. And then I'm, I will need to provide the width and height, etc., etc. Or I think it's not necessary to provide these. These can be the way they are. The only thing I may need is the text. Oh, actually, no, I don't even need to provide any of that. No, none. Font file, the font file can be there. Maybe if you want to provide it, you can put it there, but not really needed. So I'll remove this, move everything over. Put the thing there. Okay, so now we have a function, create capture. And I want it to return the path, which is this one. So I'm going to say path is equal to capture.jpg and then put the path here and then down here after doing all that it should return the path like so okay so we are done here we have our function at the top and then let's come down here and now create some html oh let me close the php tags and then let's do HTML. Yes, there we go. This is the login page we are creating here. So you can have this function in another file. You can copy this function to any project of yours that you want. Just make sure the font file is there in the same folder. And then let's come down here and do a, uh, a form. Okay, so the form here should have a method of uh, post. Uh -huh. And then let's put two inputs here. So input uh, type text, sorry. And then the name will be, 
let's say email so i just want to put one thing just to prove a point here i don't want this to actually be working i just want to show you how you can use this capture thingy here and then let me put another input of type submit and i want to change this to value and uh, log in something like this okay save and let's come back here and refresh Okay, there we go. So we have email there, blah, blah, blah. Good. Now, what I want is when I post here, we check to see if the capture is correct or not. So how do we do that? The first thing we can do is save the capture to a file. Now, I'm going to use session start here at the very top to use my session. Session start, like that. Now, the reason I'm doing that is that I can't use the same file name for every user because there will be thousands of users on your website and each one, if they're using the same file, then it's every time it will be telling them the capture is wrong. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to say file name is equal to session ID like that. Okay, so the session ID itself and let's add dot txt at the end dot txt. It's actually not necessary let's just leave it like that uh -huh. and then i'm just going to say now number the number is going to be equal to a random number so now this is the thing here so this text will have to be put in there so that we can supply the text that we want so i'll remove this from there so that we can supply the text that we want at the time. So I'm just going to say text instead like so. So this is the number we create. And then once we create that number, we create the capture image. So let's just call it my image is equal to uh, Create capture with the text that we've supplied. And then the same text, I want to put it in a file. So I'm just going to say file, put contents, and the file name is going to be the file name that we've created using our session. And then the data is going to be the text. So what I've done here is I've created a file using the session ID and then the text is this one. And every time I create an image, uh, my image, that's the path. And then uh, I save the text to compare the next time like so. So if I now run this like so, looks like nothing has happened but if we come back here you see that there's now a file here with the session id it's supposed to be a txt file you can create it that but it only has the number 28182 which is the same number that was created uh, by the captcha 28182 okay so now we can use this file number to check the next time that somebody posts so we do all this in the get variable like that okay but we only do this if it's a get so let's do this and say if post so i want to check if so you can use the uh, the server to check for whether this is a post or get variable but this will do as well if count is greater than zero, then something was posted. Else, if nothing was posted, let's create a new number like this. Okay. So if something was posted, we go here. If nothing was posted, we create a new random number and a new image. And then all we have to do now is copy that, come down to... Uh, I already know the path name here is capture.jpg, uh, right? That's the one right there. So let me copy that. 
and let me put it down here as an image. So break tag img like so. So come back, refresh. So every time you're going to see that. Okay. So email uh, instead of email uh, enter number. I think that's that's the one we are, we are supposed to to do. like that okay okay so enter the capture here so if i type here it's supposed to just compare so to compare is easy we're just going to get this name which is number here so i'm just going to say if post number is equal to so first of all i just need to get the file so file name is equal to, so I can put the file name right at the top here, regardless whether we are posting or not, the file number, the file name remains the same. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say uh, number is equal to file get contents from the file. Uh -huh. So get the contents from the file and then make a comparison. So if it's equal to number, then here we're going to say echo, you are correct. Like so. And then we can redirect the person to something. Let's say redirect or, or check if other details are correct like if the email and all that and then afterwards redirect right and then if it didn't work out if it's not true then we have to regenerate another number so else not correct then we're going to echo and say aperture is wrong like that and then once it's wrong, let's generate a new number and save a new file right here, like so. Okay, so let's see if that actually works. So refresh. Let me just type some gibberish. Captcha is wrong, so I get another chance. Captcha is wrong. And then now let's type 77734. You are correct. Yay! So this is how uh, a CAPTCHA system would actually function. So hopefully you have learned something new. Uh, and I will see you in another tutorial. Thanks for watching.